Thank you. First and foremost, thank you guys for being here this morning. You guys are the, are, are the troopers, all right, 745. I saw some people stumbling back uh, last night or getting really just getting ramped up. So you guys being here, I appreciate that. I want to start off first uh, thanking a couple of people. Number one, uh, I want to thank my head coach, Brian Gregory, for allowing me to be here. Uh, I literally jumped on a plane, came here. We're right in the middle of the season. I go back and we play a game tomorrow. So I had the opportunity, I told coach, hey, I'm going to be speaking. He said, go represent us, work with the guy 11 years. So uh, just thankful for him to be here. Secondly, I'd like to thank Gary Schofield. He had the opportunity to introduce me to uh, Patrick McHenry, who serves on the board of directors for the NSCA. And I met Patrick at the uh, National Convention last year in Orlando. And we were actually in a hallway, and I was showing Patrick this stuff. And Patrick's like, hey, man, we got to get you to speak. And so uh, big hats off to him. So one of the things that uh, we're going to do today, we're, I'm going to be a presenter that's going to ask you to pull your phones out. Okay, because we're going to do some live polling with you guys. If you haven't participated in that, uh, do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to dial that number, and then you're just going to text Michael B. It's basically my last name without the Y, 360. And when you do that, you will automatically get a message that says you're in. You're part of the crew. All right, so I'm going to let you guys go ahead and do that. What we're going to talk about today, and Leanne already touched on it, she doesn't have time to do a movement screen. Nobody has time, right? But everybody's doing a warm-up. So in the time it takes you to do a warm-up, you can do a movement screen. I'm going to share that with you today. Everybody in? Everybody good? It'll be in here. So first and foremost, who's here today? I just want to know my audience. Coaches conference, I know. But it gives an opportunity to play around with it. All you got to do if you're a high school strength coach, just put A in and hit send so on and so forth. If you're college, B. If you're a personal trainer, C. I'm going to actually see this live coming up here. Sweet. So we've got mostly college guys here. All right, great. Isn't that pretty cool? I did a presentation with some high school kids. I couldn't get a response from them. I had this in here, and I had unbelievable response from high school kids. So... Uh, it's kind of a neat thing. So my thing is this, I want to teach you guys a little bit of my philosophy why I think movement screening is so important. Number one, what is the difference between a high performance sports car and a high performance sports athlete? What's the difference between a pit stop and a warm up, a training session, okay, an injury assessment? And my point is this, that both the car and the human body is a dynamic, highly complex machine. It needs to be continuously evaluated in order to maximize performance and minimize mechanical failures. Okay, so I always ask my athletes, are you a dump truck or are you a Ferrari? Every single time, coach, I'm a Ferrari. Guess what, I think you're a Ferrari too. That's why you're here today. And guess what? I'm the mechanic. This weight room is my garage. That court is the test track, and then the racetrack is obviously the basketball court. And so I approach my training with my guys that way, and let's look at a car, a, highly, a high performance sports car. We'll take NASCAR. That car doesn't sit in the garage and they pull it out the day of the race, turn the key, pull up the start line, and expect that thing to run at peak performance and put itself in a position to win. There are months, weeks, days, minutes, seconds leading up to that race to try to maximize performance and put themselves in a position to possibly win. And that's the same way that I treat my athletes when they come in there. And I think this is a great quote from uh, one of uh, George's uh, own, Roy Benson. I think the easiest thing in the world to do as a coach is to get a guy strong or a girl strong, to get our athletes stronger. I think anybody can do that. And I think anybody can make an athlete tired. I mean, we all know those coaches. That wasn't a good practice unless somebody puked. All right, it wasn't a good session. But I think not everybody can make somebody better. And that's what defines us in our profession, is that anybody can make somebody stronger, anybody can make somebody tired. But can you make them better? 
Can you assess what they're doing? Can you look at that highly complex machine and be able to fine tune it to maximize peak performance? And so let's do another question here. Let's take a survey. Do you perform some type of movement screen, one, or do you perform some side of warm-up? I'm just curious. So screen A, warm-up B, C, both. Okay. Very good. So about, so six, over, over half of you guys are doing both some sort of a warm-up and a movement screen. That's great. So what, in fact, is a dynamic warm-up? Let's just get a quick, knock this out of the park. Dynamic warm-up is a series of movements designed to actively prepare the body for performance. Plain and simple. And then a movement assessment is a set of unique movement patterns designed to identify muscle imbalances and weaknesses in the body's kinetic chain. Kinetic chain, what is that? When I do a movement assessment, I look at the body in terms of in a mobility stability sequence. Starting with the foot, everything we do is ground up. So, foot needs to be stable, ankle needs to be mobile, knee needs to be stable. See the see what's happening here? Stability, mobility, stability, mobility in the hips. Leanne talked about that. Kids lack the flexibility in the hips, trunk stability, and then T-spine, thoracic spine mobility. At any point in time that that kinetic chain is broken, you're going to rob efficiency, you're going to minimize performance, and you're going to put a higher susceptibility to some sort of injury, mechanical failure. So again, if I've got a hip that's immobile and it's wedged between two stable joints, susceptibility for injury, it's just going to be height. And this is how I use my system looking at my kids. I don't grade them out of one, two, or three. I don't get them in a pass fail. I just look at it, joint segments, okay? And we're going to practice that today and saying, we look at our athletes every day. That's squat, he's not squatting correctly, he's not cleaning correctly, he's not doing this correctly. We already have a trained eye just looking at that athlete as they move and be, just be able to make a, just a quick note about what you're seeing. So if you do perform a movement screen, what is your biggest challenge? What is your biggest challenge as a coach? My favorite one is uh, coach adherence. You know, you do all that stuff and you should tell the coach and it just goes in one ear and out the other. Okay. Time, right? I don't need a bigger weight room. I don't need more weights. I need more time. It's a big one. How often do you screen your athletes? This is a big one. It's one thing I know some people, they do, I ask them, I say, how often do you screen your athletes? Uh, once a year. Wow. Okay. Okay. Once a semester. What if I told you you could do it every time you do a warm-up? So, this begs the question. If you're not, this is only, if you're not doing some sort of movement screen, what is your primary reason? If you're not doing a movement screen. Staffing. So what's interesting is this. If you're doing a movement screen, you don't have time. And if you're not doing a movement screen, you don't have time. We don't have time. Right? That's the tough part, finding the time to get that in. So, again, combining what we're already doing with something that's going to allow us to assess. And we combine the advantages of the dynamic warm-up, movement screen, combining those together. Obviously, it's going to optimize a time-starved schedule. And honestly, at the high school, I don't even know how you guys get it done in terms of the time constraints that you have. And it's a way to evaluate your athletes each session, not once a semester, every time you do a warm-up, okay? Whew, good, I'm done lecturing. So now I'm ready to actually get into this. All right, so inchworms are, uh, this is a movement, excuse me. Right here. That was, that was really good. I need 10 people. Well, I don't know if we have enough room for 10 people. Let's do five people up here that want to go through this movement screen. Come on up. Don't be shy. And then, while I'm doing that, you guys are going to get to assess. Okay? So there's a checklist. I'm just going to kind of hand these out. You guys can work together. Line yourselves up right across. Thanks, Gary. 
Yeah. yeah. So we're going to hand these out. So each column, I literally have a sheet. OK? I have a sheet. And so you can see the athlete's name. We're just going to call athlete one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, you guys are going to go behind them. OK? So we'll go behind here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. You guys are going to assess them right now. So if you got a sheet, just write it in. One, two, three, four, five. And then here's our, you guys can see the checklist there. Those are the joint segments that we're going to kind of look at. Now we're going to go through this together, of course. But if you see something wrong, all you're going to do is check off that joint segment where you see a weakness or an imbalance. Right? You guys ready? OK. Inchworm. Now, I'm sure we've all probably seen this movement, right? You come down, walk your hands out, come up into this movement here, walk the hands up. A couple of things we're looking for when we just do that. It's a simple movement, right? A lot of my guys, it's kind of like a perpetual fall, right? Where they bend their knees to get down into that position. Cueing it up, right? We're already seeing that. When they come all the way up into this position in a supper dog, a lot of kids lack even sort of any sort of thoracic extension, abdominal extension. They even be able to get in here, hip extension. Okay, they can't even get up into this position. If my athlete has a pain in the lower back, boom, I immediately refer him to the athlete, athletic trainer. I am not an athletic trainer. Go see the trainer. Okay. Then they walk them feet up to their hands. We're looking at hip flexion, hamstring extension, soleus extension. Okay. You guys see that on your sheets? You can kind of mark that, kind of get your bearings here. So we're going to have one, two, three, four. They're just going to walk across right now. They're going to do an inchworm just like I did. Hands down to the floor. I always tell my guys, if your hands are moving, your feet are still. If your feet are moving, your hands are still. We're going to probably see some guys get up to this point here and not be able to go. But go ahead. Let's see what we got. Hopefully I got some inflexible guys here so we can actually see some stuff here. All the way into extension there. How well they're able to do that. If anybody's got pain, get out. We're just going to go across to over on the other side. Good. You guys can jump right in behind them. Yeah, seeing anything? We've seen some limitations there in the hip deflection. We've seen some, some limitations in the hamstring extension. Okay, you guys seeing that? All right, you guys are moving like at a, you guys are moving like at 7:45 in the morning. Let's pick it up here. All right, Jeez Louise. It's like the geriatrics of uh, dynamic warm-up here. All right. Typically what I'll do is I just won't do this. Then I, I, have, a, I have what I call foundation movements. Foundation for plyometric, foundation for agility, foundation for linear speed, foundation for movement, right? And so we'll usually go back this way, and then we'll do some sort of movement coming back, whether that's a one-two skip or a top load skip. I keep knocking this thing. Uh, so we use that going back all right next one one of my it's just such a simple one but a bent over straight leg hinge okay so gonna come over try to touch that floor we're looking for hip hinge couple of things you're gonna look for a lot of athletes you'll see this you'll see an instability when they're doing this okay they lack the ability to be able to come down and be able to manage that right Athletes are really good at compensating their movement. So when they come down here, lots of them will turn their toe out to actually get the extensibility and to get that hip up, right? So those are kind of some cues you're going to watch right now as they go through this. Bent over, we're looking at glute strength, stability. We're looking at hip flexion and extension as we do this, all right? The people in the back, please be careful and be mindful of the people in the front because I don't want anybody wearing a shoe, all right? Right in the face. Ready? Let's do it. Bent over straight leg. See what's going on here. Again, this kind of reinforces the extensibility there. 
And the nice thing this is, it's working on an agonist antagonistic type muscle imbalances. You're able to see that. So if something's activated once, a lot of the screens, it's just kind of one-sided. You're just looking at one way. Here, agonist antagonistic, which is how the body's gonna move when it's out there on the field or the court anyways, you're able to look and assess that. You guys able to check that off? You guys are seeing some stuff, right? Just use your sheet to check that off. Looking for the toe. Is the toe turned out or is the toe pointing straight down? All right, the next one. This is like, you can literally do this movement once and this can just be a movement screen within itself. This, this particular exercise. Okay, so we got a downward dog heel raise. So all we're gonna do is come down into a push-up position. My athletes are gonna come down, do a push-up. Come up, a lot of my freshmen come in. Right? We got a Georgia Aquarium, I said, dude, you look like you could be down there begging for fish, right? You're like, uh, trying to do a push-up. Come down, from here we're gonna look at, I love this, this is gonna tell me whether or not you can even do an overhead squat, right into extension here into this downward dog, right? And from this position, a lot of my guys will get to here, and boom, they stop. This is all they can get. They lack the shoulder flexion. I know immediately, we ain't gonna over, we're not gonna be able to overhead squat with my man here. Okay, he lacks the flexibility in the upper body to be able to do that. Pushing all the way back. Look at the heels. Are they up on their toes? Are they able to press those heels down into the floor? Okay, from this position, we're gonna lift that leg. Again, they turn it out to be able to get into that position. And then how do they swing that leg through? A lot of my guys will do this coming in. Boop. Lack of hip flexion, being able to get up into that. Or my favorite, right? I got my leg up flat, coach. Or they'll swing their leg out into that position. Can they drive up and come right in through that position? Okay, and then they just walk their hands out and do the opposite side. So lots of things we're looking at. T-spine strength and stability, mobility, hip flexion, hamstring extension. Soleus extension. Leg raises up, hip extension and strength. You guys got it? And then when their leg comes through, hip flexion, hip extension. I am really struggling with this thing today. Holy crap. All right, you guys ready? Recorders ready? Go. Push up, what kind of form we got? Driving those heels. Some people say, uh, don't tell them what to do uh, because then they'll learn a test. I don't care, I'm, gonna, I'm a coach. I'm gonna coach you up. I want you to, I want to see what you're doing. All right, come on back down, my man. Push up, good. Drive the heels into the ground, full extension here. Raise this leg up for me as high as you can. Okay, when he raises that up, what happens? Maybe he comes up a little bit. He has to rise up on that toe. Swing it through, then walk the hands out. So almost like an inchworm, back out, and then do the other side. Push up, drive the heels into the ground, press. People that are doing it behind them, again, be careful. Watch my man pull his leg through here, he has trouble there. Probably got some tight hip flexors, got some hip mobility flexibility issues there. Can't swing that leg through to get it flat. Let's get you a little bit more into an extension here. There you go. Again, you may have to cue him up. You say, oh, he can't get extended. Well, maybe he just needs to know the cues. I have no problem. See how we're doing there? She's swinging the leg through. She's having to do this to get that leg up and through. Lack of hip mobility flexibility there. You guys getting warm? You getting warmed up? You guys are so, like so perfect on these things in slow. All right. You guys feeling that? Yeah. You guys are talking it out right now? Like, Holy crap. Yeah. My favorite is my freshmen come in, we go through this warm up, and I go, okay, that was the warm up. They go, coach, that wasn't the workout? I'm like, no, we're just getting started, man. Like, they're literally pouring sweat. You guys are moving at a break like a snail's pace, so we're okay. All right, we got the rest of the day. Next one I really like is the quad table reach. Okay, very simple. Opposite hand, opposite foot. Why do I go opposite hand, opposite foot? I'll explain that in a minute. Push the foot against the hand. Let the leg do the work. Reach out into a dynamic position. Being able to go out into that tight 
or excuse me, to that table position. Again, you'll see your athletes, if they lack the flexibility, you'll see a lot of this, so I have to come down. Lacking glute stability, lacking strength here, right? Opposite hand, opposite foot, push themselves down into that position, come down with control, opposite hand, opposite foot, coming all the way out there, okay? And you'll see, the reason why I don't do this, same hand, same foot, is this. Knee goes out, and I don't get a really, again, they're athletes, they're, gonna, they're athletic, they're gonna compensate their movements. So I go opposite hand, opposite foot, out into that table position. And you're gonna see a lot of your athletes, if you try this movement, it's this. Okay, like that agonist, antagonist. I got hip flexion and hip extension happening at the same time. Okay, it's kind of the beauty of being able to do this too and be able to look at that. You guys ready? Scores ready, go. And even bringing your foot up and grabbing it will be a challenge for some as well. And that's an immediate sign that mobility there. It's pretty good, not bad. I always tell my athletes, point your knee behind you. I want to be able to lay a tablecloth over you and, and put out some protein shakes on your back here, okay? Some critical reload on your back. Did you see how I plugged that in? That was pretty, that was pretty clever. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, you guys seeing that? Good. How am I doing on time? Well, I don't need a thumb. Give me an actual time, because I can talk about this crap all day. What do we got? Huh? 15? Okay, so, yeah, I gotta, you guys gotta move faster. You guys are like a herd of turtles. Okay, here we go. Backward lunge, okay? You will be surprised, and you're, your kids come in, you're, this is gonna be your backward lunge. Okay, right, they can't even physically be able to get down into a lunge position. Come up over this front straight leg, and again, we're gonna twist and reach up. A lot of your athletes are gonna lack the flexibility to be able to put their hands on the floor, twist and reach up and extend. Into that position, twist and reach up, and then pop up. So, just if you can only go down to where you keep your front leg straight, if they do this, I get a tongue lashing. Keep the front leg straight. Twist and reach up, and don't do this. Swing up, right? Roll out. Unroll yourself. Unroll your body. And everything we kind of looked at before so far is what? A Little bit of T-spine flexion here, but now we're looking at T-spine and the transverse movement. You guys ready? Backward lunge. Twisting and reaching up. What kind of flexibility, mobility do you have to be able to do that? Do you see some problems in the T-spine? Do you see some, the big one is IT band extensibility. Our guys get super tight out there because of the nature of the lateralness of the sport. 30% of the game of basketball is spent laterally. Look at that back foot. One of the things I cue them up is, don't be on your toe while you do this. Drop this hip down. Keep your hips square. That's going to hit right in here, too. It's going to tell me what kind of extensibility you have in that hip. Again, all agonist, antagonist type movements here. My man here hasn't got a straight leg yet on his movement. It's okay. Doesn't make you a bad person, just inflexible. All right? Drop that heel for me. Good. Front straight leg. Opposite of bent. Oh, my man, just shorten that gap. There you go, front straight leg. Over that front straight leg. I always say knee, nose over the knee, because it's real easy to do this. All right, nose over the knee, staying in that line, squaring those hips up. See some hamstring issues there too, okay? Awesome. Not that it's awesome that you have bad hamstrings, but you know what I mean. Okay, just gonna do a quick poll. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks guys, appreciate it. Appreciate it, you're welcome man, thank you. Thank you very much man, thank you very much, appreciate it. Okay, be honest, be honest. This is where probably some of my friends may screw around with me and be like, you know, you suck. Probably see that shoot up there, I try to prevent that. Um, so, one of the other things that I've kind of put in, this thing has evolved over the years is, just a lunge and reach is one of our other ones. 
that you saw up there, part of our segments, but you reach across here, okay, so I'm looking at this extension and rotation, but I want to plug the fingers to the floor. You'll be surprised how many of your athletes can't even get into here, get into this lateral flexion. Then I twist and rotate back. So we're looking at all the transverse planes, we're looking at the sagittal and frontal planes, how is the trunk and T-spine moving, okay? It's gonna be extremely important, especially for who? Your overhead sports, tennis, volleyball, baseball, to be able to see that, right? So again, here, twisting across, plugging, twist and reach, reach back. and doing that, okay? Um, thank you for thinking I'm amazing. And thank you guys for thinking I'm good. Okay, so here, here's the deal. The, the NSCA, how much is my time? Oh, sweet. The NSCA tells me I have to have this presentation in like three months before I'm gonna do it. I have changed this thing up. So the, the one in your book might be, it's, it is. It's completely different than the one I have in here. Um, if you would like to receive a copy of this presentation, just send me your email and your name and I will make sure you get a copy of that, okay? Um, if you just pull it in there, I won't let it show up here so people aren't seeing it. I've got a lot of stuff in here, how to set the dynamic warm up up. Uh, we just do half court because I don't have to bring out cones, it's simpler. We've kind of done it all right now, we've used the checklist, we've learned about how to do that. A Couple of options that you can do, again, time, Probably not gonna have time to sit down and create individual corrective exercise programs. But what you might be able to do is look at it and be able to tally up and say, how many do I have in this column? I'm gonna use that column and I'm gonna globally apply that to my athletes, okay? And assist in that matter. Now, if I got a couple of kids that wanna stay after, do some work, then we can work on them individually, right? Uh, I gotta get a plug into my man, Steve Olson. ExcelTrainingDesigns.com, he has a PT training template. You can literally take pictures of your own corrective exercises because yeah, we've, we've identified something's wrong, how are you gonna apply it? You can actually put them in there, it has drop down tables, you can categorize everything. Because I, I thought about having a big poster, which I thought was great, but then I thought, where the hell am I gonna put that thing? You know, because I would literally need for each one of the segments almost like 10 different posters to put up. So this allows me just to be able to print it up on an eight and a half piece, uh, sheet of paper. I take a magnet, I stick it on the rack, the kids go. And then we get into how are you gonna apply the correctives, right? Okay, I know what needs to be done, how am I gonna do it? We do it as a rotating the group, put the guys in. Athlete A is a squatter, athlete B is a spotter, athlete C is doing their corrective on the ground. As Soon as A is done, he's on the floor doing the corrective. B gets up, squats, C now becomes a spotter. We have that rotation going on there like that. Uh, which type of corrective? Listen, I, we do dynamic. I do isometric holds with my kids. It's gonna be the quickest and easiest way. I got a tons of references in here as to why I do that. Statically, if we do it, we only reserve that for afterwards, okay? I mean, let's be honest. Gymnasts are incredibly flexible and mobile. Why? Because they spend a tremendous amount of time stretching. Why? So they can actually do it, but you can't, we don't have that time to be able to put that. So static stretching improves mobility, okay? But on a time constraint, we can get the same thing from a dynamic corrective movement and actually strengthen, okay? And this is the biggest thing here. Um, I'll talk about it. Everybody's using the Joe Ken system, okay? You can look at, if I'm doing upper body training that day, focusing on that, then I'm gonna do upper body correctives. I want to strengthen that. If I'm doing lower, if I'm doing total body, I may do a blend of stuff that I see globally as being a problem and I get a blend of that. And the reason being is anytime we increase mobility, we must increase stability, increase strength. Because if we make something more mobile and it can bend and move out there and then you send them out in the, on the court or the field and go out there and perform at a very high speed and they, don't develop, they had not developed the mobility and stability to be able to handle that newfound strength, you're gonna open yourself up for, for susceptibility for an injury there, okay? Um, how many times a week we do it? And then just some corrective tips and stuff. So, and I got a ton of references in terms of static versus dynamic and all that stuff. So, uh, right now, I wanna be able to open it up and offer uh, questions. And I only gave you guys like five of my stuff here uh, with the stuff uh, as far as the actual movements themselves, but 
I know you guys probably got a thousand questions, so how much time do I have? Eight minutes. Sweet. So I can answer questions, or you guys can say, show me some more, and I'll do that too. So, all right. Yes, sir. Every time we have a warm, I have a practice uh, in season right now, I'm doing it. We're on the court. Coach gives me seven minutes to get them ready to go. Okay, coach. We take an hour and a half to get ready for a game, but you'll give me seven minutes to get them ready to go for, uh, for practice. Yeah, okay, sure, right? But uh, I do all that, so we're going through that motion. So, but we do it every time. Uh, Leanne talked about it. Hey, listen, I may not do this on a, on a weight training day, and she's absolutely right. I, I won't do it on that because we'll do other stuff in there. We actually go through our correctives as part of, part of our warm-up. We do what's called a short foot series. So everything we do from the knee down, which has totally changed a lot of the stuff that I've done is, we all look at all this stuff up here, right? Oh, we got tight hips, we gotta work on the hips, work on the hips, work on the hips. Hey, let's look at what's going on with the lower quarter from the knee down. And I say this, if I've got a straight line B8, this thing's cranking out 500 horsepower, and I got high octane fuel in it, and the tires are flat. Is it gonna run right? No. My, my, my female coach athletes are like, what are you talking about? You know, but the guys, you know, like, they're like, oh yeah, car, all right, got you, you know what I'm saying? So, but think about that. And if, the, and if the tires are messed up, what's that eventually gonna, gonna mess up in the car? The suspension of the car, the struts, all this stuff. And meanwhile, we've just been focusing on the hips. We haven't looked at what's going on from the knee down. I can tell you right now, if you clean up from what's going on from the ground to here, a lots of this other stuff gets cleaned up. It actually cleans itself up. How many times do you I keep working on hip mobility with a guy and it doesn't ever seem to get better? Chances are, problem in the feet. So just as simple as this, doing this movement, watch what goes on with this toe. Is he got the heel spinning out to do that? If he's doing this, chances are, Lacking toe mobility. There's nothing sexy about a mobile big toe, I know. There's nothing sexy about it. But we actually take our athletes through a short foot series, and we actually take a, a band, put it around the toe, wrap it around the knee, they're sitting down, and they're taking a cross ball, and they're actually rolling into that arch to improve that extensibility of that big toe. You tell your athlete to get in this position and explode off. And then tell them to turn their toe out and try to explode off. Bad wheels, man. I tell them, so listen, we're retreading your tires, okay, so that the, so your body suspension will work correctly, okay? So that's how we use it. So we usually use the, the uh, we do this stuff before practice, and this gives me an iteration. If I got a check off, I look at a guy, I'm like, dude, he looks awful. And then guess what? The next day, he may be out there and he looks what? Pretty good. You know, we do auto-regulated, progressive exercise, all that stuff. Why can't we do that with our warm-up? Where is that athlete at in that particular moment for that particular day? Like, dude, he's super tight. And I actually do it while our team's warming up, and I'll actually prescribe. I literally go through that, and I get about five minutes to do all that, and I get about two minutes to do some stuff. I'll say, you know what? The team as a whole looks a little tight in this area. I'm gonna, we're going to do a couple of dynamics, holds, and stretches and stuff. Yes, sir? If I wanted uh, more information, do you have a website? Yeah, uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, uh, Gary's the one I entered. Gary was like, dude, this thing's awesome. You got to share it. And I'm like, okay. So I, we actually have a website. We have an entire system. And then if you get into the system, we actually have a, uh, a page that you can actually go to where all coaches share their ideas of how they're doing it, okay? And, and they apply it that way. Uh, and it's almost like a community. So we just started that up. It's uh, dynamicwarmupmovementscreen.com. I know it's a mouthful, blah, blah, blah. All right, but I, I'm a strength coach. I couldn't come up with any sort of creative stuff other than that. Um, and here's the one thing I'm using with my, my kids. The moment that they sign their national letter of intent, I can talk to them, right? So I send them unlisted YouTube videos of these movements and say, have your buddy film you on your iPhone and send it to me. I don't even see this kid. And I can have him. He's not even in my presence. And I have him go through the movement. I said, monkey see, monkey do. Follow it. Do it. Have your guy film it, send it to me. I can automatically send him a corrective exercise list. And so I kind of dangle that carrot for him. I say, he's like, coach, I, I, I want to get my weight room workout. Well, guess what, dude? You need to start doing your correctives. All right? And so what we use is we use, actually use the Volt platform for all of our uh, National Letter of Intent guys. 
We send that out. They got a booth here. It's great. I, I've, I've made thousands of how-to videos, and I've had three different uh, uh, schools on there. You know how pain of ass it is to redo all that stuff? So those guys are great. It's a great opportunity to be able to do that video, send it out. You can actually track to see what they're doing. But this gives us a, I'll be honest with you, I want a blank canvas when you come in. So if I can get a group to come in that's already started doing the correctives, number one, the dynamic warm-up isn't so foreign to them, right? And more importantly, so they're already doing my program, but, but more importantly, we already started improving mobility, flexibility, stability. And that's essentially just the workout when we start for those guys when I'm sending those to them. Because when you come in, what do we do as coaches in college most of the time? We spend half the time trying to get these guys up to speed before they can even think about getting to be a part of the actual strength conditioning program. So it's a, it's a great way for you to be, to be able to pick and choose and then be able to send that and you got a better crop of athletes coming in, right? I wish I could be on the recruiting trail. Be like, ah, okay, you can, yeah, you can literally know what you're, what you're getting yourself into. Any other questions? How much time would I like to have? <laughs> uh, I, coach asked me that question. I told him, he said, you're no chance. So I, uh, I would like to have probably 10 to 15 minutes because I think what it allow me to be able to do is be able to look at what they're doing, assign a couple of things that I see in terms of being tight with the guys. We could do some dynamic isometric type stuff, okay? And that would probably give me enough time to be able to do that. Uh, ideally would be that uh, probably 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes would be optimal. I'm never going to see that. Never going to see that. And then sometimes coach would be like, hey, Mike, you got him 10 minutes today. I'm like, oh, sweet. I get an extra three minutes and we'll do a little extra stuff. All right. But, uh, you know, that's the strength coach. You got to operate on the fly. Yes, sir. Got one minute. One minute. There's nothing in here after, so people want to stay in action. Okay, cool. Awesome. Any other questions with that? Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Appreciate your time, appreciate you being here this morning.